how to walk. Let's go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and 15. It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, (laughs) singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another. Let's go back to verse 15. And let's read it together there. Here we go. See then. Redeeming the time. Therefore, okay, let's let's just stop right there. Ramsey Brown studied neuroscience, and he took that experience and came together with some other individuals who are into computer programming, and they began to set up goals uh, to tap into the lives of people, and They set up a legitimate business called Dopamine Labs. And this Dopamine Lab is actually a garage. And out of that garage, well, let me back up. The lab is named after the dopamine molecule, which is in our brain, that... (laughs) aids in the creation of desire and pleasure. So, Ramsey Brown and his colleagues have learned to program and design codes of the computer to provoke a neurological response in you. Their desire is that as you are on your cell phone to keep you coming back to your cell phone. And so every time you enter into your phone and you have this online experience, they're tapping into your habits to tweak how you will respond better to their programming. And this is how it happens. Um, Say, for instance, on Instagram, 
you post something and you're, you're, you're waiting for some likes. Well, they have learned to withhold the likes from you to a certain time and then all of a sudden give you a burst of likes to make you feel awesome and good. And now you want more of the program. Okay. <laughs> so in a sense, they know how to provoke your brain and give you such a rush that you're ziggity boo. <laughs> Just learned a word today from FT. Now, while they're working in the laboratory creating programs to get you excited and feel good about yourself. On the other hand, there are folks who are looking at your brain to see what creates anxiety. Larry Rosen, who's a psychologist at California State University, says, that when you put your phone down, when you put your cell phone down, your brain signals your adrenal gland to produce a hormone called cortisol. And cortisol is that hormone that triggers a fight or flight response to danger. So, Here's the situation. We check our phones. This is scientific data. Every 15 minutes or less. Even when there is no alert or notification, there's something in your head that says, I haven't checked my Facebook in a while. I haven't checked Twitter in a while. I wonder if somebody's commented on my Instagram post. That then generates cortisol and starts to make you anxious. And your goal to get rid of the anxiety is to do what? Check up your phone. And so of this anxiety you have, when you get your likes, then what happens? Dopamine. So you're, you're doing this. And on purpose. Computer programmers are not just programming the computer, they're programming you. They're programming your children. And they're operating every day to see how they can get you and your family more and more dependent on the program. To get you excited and even getting a family plan <laughs> now that I have your attention, let's read again Ephesians. Therefore, let's go back to verse 15. Let's go back to verse 15. See then. Yeah. Because the days are what? Would you agree that the days, there's some evil stuff that's going on. 
We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness that are operating in high places. This is serious, serious stuff. Now, the question is, question is for you. I've given you this information. Where did you get that, Pastor Pyphus? It's watching CNN. And this thing caught my attention. And I said, wow, I have to get that information to begin to share with the body of Christ. Now, the question is, what are you going to do with it? What will you do now that you have been informed? What will you do now that you have this knowledge? You know, I can't say my church from one group to a, the next is very consistent. I asked that question yesterday, and it was absolute silence in the room. <laughs> okay, so let's unpack it. Give me verse 17 again, and we'll keep drilling it, keep drilling it, keep drilling it to get you thinking. Therefore, do not be what? Unwise. Don't be what? Unwise. Don't be what? Unwise. But do what? Understand. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know what? <clears throat> we are called to walk in wisdom. Now, we got to unpack that to understand what it really means. Before I get started, let's praise God in advance for his timeless word. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. I'm not asking you to applaud me. Applaud the word of God. What does it mean to be wise? I had some folks throwing things out at me yesterday, um, even throwing out the terminology knowledge. And you have to understand that knowledge and wisdom have different definitions and different directions. They're connected to one another, but still they're different from one another. Get this in, because this is going to be important and going forward. With knowledge, knowledge takes in God's word. Knowledge does what? Yeah, it takes in God's word. Wisdom gives out God's word. Knowledge does what? It does what? And wisdom does what? So I can't give away what I don't have. One more time. Knowledge does what? And wisdom does what? Add it to that. Add it to that on your definition of wisdom. Wisdom gives out God's word and correctly applies the knowledge of God's word. Do you understand that? Wisdom gives out the word of God and correctly applies the knowledge of God's word. In other words, you can, you can immerse yourself in the word of God, memorize a whole bunch of scriptures, 
but then begin to speak them out of context. Uh, try to practice them and there's not the proper application of that word. So then every week I have to pray for wisdom in terms of how I handle the word of God. So I know the correct time of giving that word. The correct words to speak. All right? You understand me? Y'all with me? Okay. Knowledge or wisdom, excuse me, also has to do with my thinking. Uh, my thinking, my sensitivity, <clears throat> my sensibility, it is the foundation for my soundness. <clears throat> it has to do with me walking in a moral and upright manner. Wisdom is important. Did you get that? Okay. Let's keep going. Wisdom will impact the way I view and approach life. Wisdom is going to impact what? The way I view. It's going to do what? You know the scripture that says, without a vision, the people perish. Without a spiritual revelation, the people perish. Yeah, it, it impacts my, the word of God impacts my view. The word of God coming in and then going out impacts my view of things. I use this scripture quite a bit in counseling sessions. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall... Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? A lot of times I can't see God because of what is coming into my eye gate and my ear gate and affecting my heart. And it's clogging up my sight. So I cannot, I cannot see God. I cannot see Jesus in the reconciling mode. I can only see then the beam that's in your eye. <laughs> And I cannot see for the log that's in my eye. But when I take in mm, God's word and it begins to settle in my spirit, it impacts the way I see a situation. I'm, not, I'm no longer looking at it in the natural, but I then see it through spiritual eyes. Amen. Amen. Okay, so you get that part of it. It affects my view. Whew. It affects my approach, how I approach things. Point there, my faith. As I approach this situation, am I going to approach it in faith or am I going to approach it out of my flesh? Mm. Mm. Here's one. It, it impacts this wisdom 
really begins to speak to how I deal with family matters. Amen. And I'm just speaking of everyday common things that you deal with where you need wisdom, right? Amen. So you're with me so far? How many of you will agree that you need wisdom when it comes to your finances? Amen. Need a little help there? Yeah. Some of you have little children, love little babies. Um, can I help you just a little bit? Okay. I don't want to get in your business. I'm just trying to, just trying to help. <laughs> First of all, let me, let me just step into this by saying this. The meaning of Proverbs is standard. God's standard. You know what's interesting? David taught Solomon's standards, God's standard, but he failed in teaching Absalom and Adonijah. And those were the boys that kicked against him. They gave him the most trouble. Listen, when you fail to teach your children God's standard, you're going to have something else on your hands as they get older. Can I get a witness? A problem that we're seeing a lot is many children are growing up without the standards of God. It's important. Whoo. So, parents, this is something that I need you to watch out for. The world just pressures us with all kind of stuff. You go in the store, they have things looking so nice and pretty, mannequins, and you see other little children walking around with, with this stuff, things in their hand. Is it always right to duplicate what you see in the world for your children? Not at all. So just be careful. I know you like nice things, but you have to have an application of wisdom, even in terms of how you buy. Yeah. Amen. So why buy $50 shoes for a three-month-old baby? Well. I asked permission, could I just step in there? <laughs> huh? Wait. I got a one-year-old grandbaby, and my daughter wants to buy her some $50 Jordans. I'm like, are you serious? She's going to be out of them in a month. Why are you wasting that money? Did y'all hear Adrian? Say it again. My oldest daughter, I have a one-year-old grandbaby, and she wants to buy these $50, $60 Jordans for a one-year-old baby. It's going to be out of those shoes in a month. What sense does that make? You're wasting that money. He said that. I, I didn't say it. He said it. <laughs> look. And, and look here. That $50, that $50, you're going to wish you had <laughs> in the future when that child wants to go to college. and needs to buy material books. Come on, Daddy, talk to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to buy a book. Yeah. He's got... <laughs> okay, you can say that. Talk to him. $50. $50 is not going to buy a college book. 
Last time I was in college, about $150 for a book. And that was a long time ago. That was way back behind, way back. <laughs> you graduated before I did. I did. <laughs> Books then, when I was in college, were expensive. I can't even imagine what they cost now. And meanwhile, <clears throat> college tuition is rising up to a place, listen, as programmers are, pro are programming you in all ways, they're programming things in all dimensions so that you, can't, you cannot afford to send your child to college. That's the game. And you got to be on top of the game. And you can't be on top of the game by buying every edition of Jordan shoes. You, you can't. You, you, don't, you don't win. <clears throat> what more? What more? Every time you do this, every time you do this, what's the matter, baby? <laughs> you frown a little bit. <laughs> it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. <laughs> you may not see it now. But when you get ready to go to college, you're going to appreciate your mama and daddy. And let's just appreciate this mama right now for what she's trying to do for baby. <clears throat> Listen. Proverbs means what? It means what? Oh, y'all are here. You're listening. God stand. Every time you go in one of the designer stores, they even got them for the little babies now. <laughs> when, when you go there and you start dressing your baby up in this, you know what? You're setting a standard. And one that you're going to have to keep up as you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Is it God's will? Now, I didn't mean to go here. I'm, I'm getting off track. But is it God's will really for you to live from paycheck to paycheck? Is it his will for you to be the tail? Okay. So, therefore, do not be but Okay. And so when your children when your children come at you and they want this, 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 this. You sit them down and you say, listen, let's just go through Proverbs. <laughs> yeah, you can put me in there. I, I'm sorry. You want to blame me for it. Pastor say it. <laughs> Well, listen, in the end, in years to come, your children will thank you, and they're going to thank the church. This is a time where we really have to buckle down and get into God's word because, as I said, the enemy is busy. Praise God again for his word.
Okay, so the wisdom is going to help me with my finances. <sighs> Even adults, I got on the children. How is it going to help me? I need wisdom when it comes to selection of friends. It helps me, brother, to understand what happens when a friend becomes a foe and how to respond to that. Do I grab them up by the neck? <laughs> how here's wisdom how do I view how do I approach the fiery furnace the Hebrew boys in wisdom says even if we, don't, we go in there it doesn't matter. God is able. That's wisdom. How do I handle the forces of darkness that are coming against me? Do I flee? Or do I stand still and see the salvation? Of the Lord. Y'all are here today. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that God will see you through? Amen. Proverbs is what? Standard. Who standard? God. Let's make that clear. Who standard is it? And that's what we need, God's standard, because there is a wisdom of this world. Of the world. It's human wisdom. And we seem to be attracted to that. Give a person a microphone, put them in front of a camera, put them on TV, and automatically you begin to drink from their pool of experience. And that pool of experience may be the school of hard knocks. It may be under the umbrella of learn from my mistakes. I don't want you to drink from the trough of my mistakes. God's wisdom is far better. Amen. Revelation, tailor-made specifically for you. For you. This came out in Rhema yesterday. To every situation, there is a right answer. There is the right answer. And God has the answer. Jesus is the answer. Let me say that one more time. Jesus is the answer. Okay, pastor, you told me what wisdom is, what it's not. I recognize that I need it. Where can I find it? Glad you asked that question. 
Job 28. Let's start at verse 12. While you're getting your pads ready and everything, let me just say this. Man, I, I wish when I was much younger that somebody had just sat me down and made me sit through Proverbs. It's loaded. It's loaded. Um, I wish somebody had just, so, you know, more than being inspirational, you need to get some instruction. The church today is big on inspiration. Big, 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 big on inspiration. But when it comes to practical living and walking in wisdom of God's word, we need some help there. Can I get a witness? Now, is this helping anybody here? Okay. Where can we get wisdom? Where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? <laughs> Next verse. Man does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. But where is it? The deep says, not in me. C says, not in me. Cannot be purchased for gold. Nor can silver be weighed for its price. Cannot be valued in gold or ophir, in precious onyx or sapphire. Neither gold nor crystal can equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewelry or fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or quartz, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued, my God, in pure gold. So from where does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? It's hidden in the eyes, hidden from the eyes of all the living and concealed from the birds of the air. Destruction and death, say. We've heard of it. God understands its ways, and he knows its place. I love this. He looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole heavens. Get some clapping in your hands right now. Some joy in your spirit. And shout, he knows. He knows. He knows. The end from the beginning. He knows. He knows where the enemy is hiding the traps. He knows. Verse 25. To establish a weight for the wind and apportion a the waters by measure. When he made a law for the rain <laughs> and a path for the thunderbolt. Then he saw wisdom and declared it. He prepared it. Indeed, he searched it out. And to man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Now, the reverence 
of the Lord, the respect of the Lord, the honor of the Lord, putting God at the very center, that is wisdom. Amen. Because he controls everything. Now, if that's wisdom, let's just stop right here. Let's just pause here and stand to your feet, if you will, and just praise God. Hallelujah. That he, he wants to give us wisdom. about to wrap up here. <clears throat> Wisdom begins in the reverence and the fear of the Lord. Did you get that? And for everybody here, he wants to endow you daily with wisdom. So before you walk out of the house, as you wake up in the morning and you talk to God, God says, I want to give you wisdom. I want you out here clowning and acting a fool. Let me give you wisdom. And so as you, you come to situations in life and it just feels like you, you're stuck. You ever been there? Feels like the forces of darkness have got you down and there's, there's just no way out. But then God steps in and gives you a word of wisdom. of how to approach that situation. Amen. Amen. And he opens a door. <laughs> for you to walk through. And this is after you tried to talk to everybody. problem is in talking to everybody is that you have to understand that you are unique. Your situation is unique. God has a plan for your life. Thank you, Lord. And where were they when God set a path for the thunderbolt? And told the rain when to stop. He knows. He knows the timing of what you're going to go through. Mm -hmm. So it's best to consult him about it. Okay, now let's go back to our beginning scripture. And we're done. Ephesians 5. I'm going to stay here for a while in this, this thing of wisdom. The next portion that we're going to get to is how to soar. But we can't soar until we learn how to walk in wisdom. <laughs> okay. See then that you walk what? That's a big old word that basically means walk cautiously. Look around you. See what's going on. Examine. Pay attention. Walk carefully. 
The enemy's got tricks all the time. Not as, not as what? A fool doesn't know that he doesn't know that he doesn't know. Not as fools, but as okay. Making the best of time is what that means. Make this the best day in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, and just let God speak to you and what needs to be done in this day and do it. Because what? Verse 17. Don't be. You want to go shopping after service? That's all right. Just remember this passage. <laughs> Verse 18. Don't be drunk with the wine in which is dissipation, that cheapens your life. But be filled. Don't sing drunk songs. Y'all laughing. I quoted a song yesterday. I got my money, got my whiskey. And tonight I'm going to be a little tipsy. And somebody said, Pastor, did you write that song? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Well, where'd you hear that? <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> you just don't sing them kind of songs. <laughs> Speaking to one another in... In other words, in other words, build a relationship with God. Have a time of praise and worship. And when you've been in the presence of God, amen, it's going to make a difference in your life because in that you're taking in the word of God, taking in the word of God, and what comes in, hallelujah, as a man thinketh, so is he. So why are you not talking to people? Go back to verse 19. Speaking to one another. Huh? You ain't talking to folk? <laughs> Time with God is going to change all of that. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Yeah. There's no way I can be in the presence of God and he doesn't impact my heart. Amen. Amen. Did you all hear what I just said? He's going to impact your heart, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Next giving thanks. Sometimes when things are good, always for all things. So, you know what? If you've had a tough week and some difficult challenges, this is your opportunity to turn that around now and just stand to your feet, everybody. Let's give God thanks. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
And that last verse, submitting to one another, that means that, that That's a Greek word. I get up under you in exchange. You get up under me. We get up under each other. We're supporting one another as opposed to fighting each other. We're all a part of the body of Christ. But God has to get in my heart to do that. He has to get in my heart. I got to spend time with him. I have to understand that the enemy is pulling me away. He didn't want me. The last thing, Adrian, he wants is for me and you to spend time with God. So what does he do? He puts a device in our hands. Give me a palm. He puts something in the palm of your hand. Right? And essentially what he has is you in the palm of his hand. Controlling you and your family. And the wise thing for you to do, thank you, Holy Spirit, is you to lift your hands up. And say, Father, that's right. And I see people doing it now. Oh, my God. God, our desire, our prayer is not to be conformed to this world. But now transform us by the renewing of our mind. Renew our mind that we may walk not as unwise but in wisdom. Jesus, you said you are the way the truth, and the life. We want that life. We want that life. So show us how to walk in love. Help us to walk in the light. Help us to walk, oh God, in wisdom. Starting today. Starting today this moment, regulate our mind. And even now, at points in the worship where we've been worried about messages on the phone, give us peace now that goes beyond our understanding that we'll be anxious for nothing, but giving thanks to you always, oh God. Lead, guide us, teach us how to lead and walk with you. In Jesus' name, we praise you for victory over our households right now. As you teach us how to walk in wisdom, we praise you, Lord, for our families, the extended families, as you teach us how to walk in wisdom. We praise your name now. Give him glory all over this place.